Ukraine attacked a power substation in Crimea. Furthermore, an oil depot and railway station in Russia's Black Sea port of Novorossiysk and an oil refinery in the port town of Twops were targets of Ukraine, a Kyiv intelligence source told Reuters. It is noted that Kyiv has stepped up strikes on energy facilities deep inside Russian territory, which they say are legitimate military targets supporting Moscow's 27-month-old war in Ukraine. Attacks have led to disruptions in refining capacity. Ukraine launched drones at a refinery in Twops, which was already being repaired following an earlier strike, according to the source. Separately, the source said, attacks caused explosions in Novorossiysk, and in the Sevastopol Bay in peninsula of Crimea. According to the source, the strike on the power station in Sevastopol caused power cuts. The governor Mikhail Razvoziv confirmed that the station was damaged. Russia's defense ministry said it destroyed 102 Ukrainian aerial drones in the Black Sea. Russia's foreign ministry warned the West that it was playing by fire by allowing Ukraine to use Western missiles and weapons to strike Russia and that Moscow would not leave such action unanswered. The foreign ministry said in a statement that it saw the hand of the United States and Britain behind a recent spate of attacks and blamed Washington and London for escalating the conflict by authorizing Ukraine to use long-range rockets and heavy weapons they had supplied against Russian targets. Once again, we should like to unequivocally warn Washington, London, Brussels and other Western capitals, as well as Kyiv, which is under their control, that they are playing with fire. Russia will not leave such encroachments on its territory unanswered, the statement said. Russia is increasing units in northeastern Sumy region as it's preparing for major offensive on Ukraine in coming weeks. According to estimates of analysts, Russia's ongoing offensive on Kharkiv appears to be aimed at drawing Ukraine's limited reserves into the fight ahead of the main summer push in the coming weeks. Russia opened second front in northeastern Kharkiv region last week. Ukrainian armed forces have already been stationed along more than 1,000 kilometers of front line. The Ukrainian command informed NATO of the serious situation on the battlefield caused by delays in the supply of weapons. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky who visited the city of Kharkiv on Thursday, said the situation in the northeast was under control. We are working in detail with our partners to provide, in particular, Kharkiv, Donetsk, Sumy and other regions with more basic defense, namely air defense systems and sufficient long-range weapons, Zelensky said. He said that after returning to Kiev, he spoke with Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk about Ukraine's needs, about Patriot systems that could significantly change the situation in the Kharkiv direction. The attack launched on Kharkiv late last week, was the most significant border incursion since the full-scale invasion began. In just two days, Moscow has captured from 100 to 125 square kilometers that include at least seven villages, most of them already depopulated, according to two open-source monitoring analysts. NATO countries may use their air defense systems to shoot down Russian missiles. NATO Secretary General in 2009 to 2014, Anders Fogh Rasmussen said that the alliance countries could use air defense systems located in Eastern Europe to shoot down Russian missiles and drones aimed at Ukraine. He said this in an interview with the British publication iPaper. Rasmussen said interceptor missiles from neighboring NATO countries such as Poland and Romania could shoot down Russian airstrikes that target Ukraine. Earlier this year, some NATO members, namely the US, UK and France, are known to have deployed fighter jets to help Israel's air defenses intercept Iranian drones and missiles. Rasmussen noted that the military alliance could do the same thing to help Ukraine shoot down Russian air targets that are approaching. He suggested that NATO air and missile defense systems could be combined with Ukrainian ones. According to the former NATO Secretary General, 
Such efforts would protect Ukraine much more effectively by protecting its defense industry and jump-starting recovery, in return avoiding NATO troops being sent into the country. Recall, as of March 2024, Ukraine's partners provided almost $118 billion in direct military assistance, including air defense systems, namely the American ATACMS air defense systems, which were used by Ukraine with devastating effect. Despite this, according to the Wall Street Journal, the rate of interception of air targets by Ukrainian air defense fell from 46% over the past six months to 30% last month. Earlier, political journalists reported that Ukraine is putting pressure on the Joe Biden administration so that the United States allows the use of American weapons to strike Russia. The main problem now is that the White House policy limits our ability to strike military targets inside Russia, said the head of the Servant of the People, David Arakamia. In turn, the head of the Office of the President of Ukraine, Andriy Ermak, said that Ukraine offers a clear time frame for joining NATO. According to him, a date no later than July 2028 is being discussed.